Hey guys, I'm Connor Hans, and welcome to Enhance Pickleball. Today I'm taking you through what I consider to be the top five fastest ways to improve your pickleball game. These are tips that don't take long to implement, but can have immediate benefits. Don't get me wrong, there are other aspects to your game that will take longer to improve that you need to continue working on, but these are the five things that will give you the quickest possible results. Make sure to watch to the end, because we hit a surprise giveaway at some point in this video. Grab your paddle, and let's go. So at number five, our first tip of the day is to stop taking such a big swing on your return. I see so many players below the 4-5 level that hit their returns the same way that they hit their drives. But these two shots are completely different with completely different goals. On the return, the main goal is to hit the ball deep. Hitting it deep will give you extra time to move forward and it will prevent your opponent from hitting a good third shot. If you use a big swing, you may be able to get away with it sometimes, but you'll also make a lot of unnecessary mistakes. If your opponents are hitting hard and deep serves at you, you should use a compact stroke as you move through the ball with your legs. To do this, shorten your backswing and start a little bit behind the baseline so that you have space to move forward before you hit the ball. With your shortened take back, it'll be easier to make clean contact in the center of your paddle. So even though your goal is to hit a deep return, that doesn't mean that you have to add more power. Adding some height to your return can be more effective in helping you get the ball deeper. And it will also give you more time to make your way to the kitchen line. By using forward momentum to hit the ball, you're giving yourself extra stability and a head start to make it to the kitchen. Overall, a more compact swing will help you hit consistently deeper returns. It's pretty easy to get the hang of this technique, which is why it's one of the fastest ways that you can improve. Okay, so tip number four is to stop attacking balls when you're in a poor position. I see so many players that get impatient and are too aggressive at the wrong times. Every pickleball match is like a game of chess. If you immediately go for the king on your first move, you're probably gonna lose that piece. You have to work the point so that you can set yourself up with the right ball to be aggressive on. If your strategy is just to go big on every shot, then you'll consistently make errors and give your opponents opportunities to take control of the point. As a rule of thumb, if you're ever off balance or hitting the ball below your knees, you should always go for a safer shot that will keep you from being put on defense. What you want to stay away from is blasting the ball in these situations, where you'll usually either miss or you'll give your opponent an opportunity to take an advantage of your poor positioning. Depending on your level and where you are on the court, Different shots will make sense for you in these situations. If you're someone that's mastered dropping the ball into the kitchen, then this is usually the most effective play when you're out of position, regardless of where you are on the court. If you don't feel super confident in your drops yet, the farther away you are from the net, it may make sense to go for a lower, slower ball that neutralizes the point. This will give you enough time to recover, and it will prevent your opponent from being able to kill the next shot. Just make sure that you don't hit this ball high. As you approach the kitchen, it should be easier for you to get the right amount of power to where you can drop or dink the ball. Generally, just know that if you're out of position or hitting the ball below your knees, you should go for safer shots. If you can force yourself to start making better decisions in these situations, you will quickly improve your game. Tip number three is to stop hiding your weaknesses. I see so many players who are uncomfortable with certain parts of their games, so they start avoiding these shots. The issue with this is that if you don't force yourself to hit these balls and points, then they will never improve. Think about your pickleball game like a basketball team. If you give the ball to the same player every time, then the other team will catch on. However, if you let the weaker players on the team have the ball, this will add variety and it will make it harder for the opposing players to predict what you're gonna do. Also, if you let the weaker players have the ball, over time they'll gain confidence and their level will increase. The moral of the story is that you should continue to use your strengths, but you should also force yourself to use your weaknesses so that they improve over time. The main shots that I see players do this on are their backhands and their volleys. Looking at the backhand, I see so many players that try to use their forehand on every shot when they're at the back of the court. They do whatever they can to prevent themselves from hitting backhands, even if it means leaving the entire court open or running into the side fence. If the ball ever comes directly at you, I agree that you should try to use your forehand when you can. At a certain point though, you're going to have to hit your backhand. So whenever a ball comes to the left side of your body, you should force yourself to use your backhand and I guarantee it will improve over time. Looking at the volleys, I have so many players tell me that they're uncomfortable at the net and they don't like to come in. After a certain level in pickleball, they're gonna have to come in if you wanna do any damage. The only way to get comfortable at the net is to force yourself to come in and learn to control the point from the kitchen. My challenge for you is that if you're the type of player that likes to hide your weaknesses, I'd like you to spend the next month forcing yourself to hit these shots as much as you can. I can guarantee that if you do this, you'll see results really quick and by the end of the month, you'll have transformed your game. Okay, we're on to number two. Tip number two is to refine your third shot strategy. This is one of the most important aspects to becoming a better pickleball player. 
I see so many players who use the same third shot in every situation, regardless of who they're playing against and where they're positioned. If both of your opponents are standing up at the kitchen, usually your best bet is to hit a drop and follow it in. Occasionally, if they give you an easier ball, a drive can be a good changeup as you can take them off guard with your power. At a lower level, generally you see more players using drives on their third shots, and at a higher level, players tend to use more drops. However, depending on who you're playing and where they're positioned, your third shot strategy should change. Looking at who you're playing, you're going to want to adjust your shot selection accordingly. To figure out what you should do, in the first few points of the game, you should always test out how your opponents respond to drops and drives. They could be the type of player that can handle any drive that you hit to them. In this case, you'll probably want to focus more on hitting your drops. On the other hand, they may not be able to handle your power. In this case, you should throw in more drives. Taking this into account, each player on the opposing team will be different, so they could have completely different skills. So just because one player doesn't like drives, doesn't mean that his partner will have any issue with it. You have to make educated decisions player by player. Looking at their positioning, if they're following the right strategy, both players should be at the net by their third shot. Players above a 4.0 level should be doing this almost every single time. However, if you hit a deep serve or they're not following the proper strategy, the player might not make it in by the time that you hit your third shot. In this case, you should generally try to hit the ball at their feet and then follow it in. If they're all the way back, you can even use a drive. This shot is harder than the drop, but it still dips at their feet. By focusing on our third shot selection, we immediately open up a variety of new ways to score on our serves. Because of this, it's one of the fastest ways to improve your game. So guys, before we get into our number one tip, I wanted to let you know that next week we're releasing a video on the top five hacks that every pickleball player should know. If you want to be notified about when we post it, make sure to subscribe. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, the number one tip of the day. So the number one tip of the day is to take better advantage of higher balls while you're at the net. I see so many players who set up the point perfectly, then they get a high shot at the net, only to give it right back to their opponent at a medium pace. If you have a ball above your shoulder in pickleball, you need to make sure that you give it a good amount of pace. Obviously, don't go too crazy to where you lose control, but try your best to make sure that the ball doesn't come back. If your opponents are back, your best bet is to go as deep as you can. You can also try to angle the ball off the court. If your opponents are in the transition zone or at the kitchen, your best bet is to go hard at their feet. If you try to hit through them, then it will be easier for them to reflex the ball back. In the event that you need to make contact with the ball below your shoulder, you won't be able to go quite as hard. Usually, when higher level players are at the kitchen and they have a shot that they're hitting between their shoulders and waist, they go for a shot called the roll. This is where you put a little bit of topspin on the ball and try to make it jump at your opponent's feet so that it's harder for them to use their drops. The main thing to think about here is that if the ball isn't above your shoulder height, you shouldn't use the overhand motion. You should hit it more like your forehand and backhand volley. Just take a bigger swing so that you can get that extra power. So make sure that if you get higher balls at the net, you do what you can to put them away. By implementing this tip into your game, you'll be able to capitalize on the points that you're supposed to win. I really think that these are the fastest ways to make a big difference. In order to make these work though, we need to make sure that we're following the right strategy. If you want to learn more about the proper fundamentals of pickleball strategy, watch this.